My name is Paige Lehman, and today we are going to be creating abstract artwork with alcohol inks. The really cool thing about alcohol inks is that they are very vibrant ink, kind of like what's inside of a Sharpie, but instead of, of course, a Sharpie, you have it in a little bottle. So I like creating with Ranger ink. That one's my favorite. I also really like cool colors, so I like blues, I like purples, I like green, and sometimes I use yellow and pink. And as you can see from this painting here, we have green, we have a little bit of blue, it looks like we have a lot of splashes as well. So the way that you create with alcohol inks is that you use the ink themselves, and the way that you're going to spread it out is with isopropyl alcohol. And the thing about isopropyl alcohol is that you have to be very, very careful with it because it can be smelly and you have to make sure that it doesn't get on your clothes or on anything besides the paper. So the way that you do that is that you get the alcohol ink generally in these bottles here. You need to have at least 99, well, you can have 70 to 99% isopropyl. If you do less than that, I've generally found that the inks are not as vibrant and they don't move as well. So the way that you do that, the way that you set up is that you take one of these little bottles. You can get those on at Michael's, on Amazon. I really like Blick Art. That one's my favorite. And you have these little funnels as well that generally come with these. And you just very carefully pour the alcohol into the bottle like that. Then we're going to put this little funnel away. I can already smell it. So whenever you use this, be very careful. You can also use gloves if you want to, if you don't want alcohol to get on your hands, or if you don't want the inks to get on your hands. And so to start, we have all of our alcohol ready to go. Since we've chosen all of our colors as well, we have all of those lined up. And you may notice this little bottle here that has a lot of gold on it. This is gonna be called a mixative, so it's a more it's a thicker ink. It has a lot of sparkles inside of it. And whenever you add it to an ink of any color or just the regular alcohol, you get these really beautiful colors of gold. Now, the nice thing about alcohol inks and the interesting thing and why I like them is because you can never create the same piece twice. Whenever you create a work of art, just like this one, whenever we use this blank page, even though I may use the same technique, the painting will look completely different which to me is very interesting. I like that there is less predictability with it and that that creates even a better environment to create an abstract piece of art. So let's go ahead and examine this first. So we have a lot of color in here, which means that we're using a lot of ink. Whereas up in here, you can see, like for example, right in here, it's really light. And the reason why it's light is because I'm adding more isopropyl alcohol to it. So the more alcohol that you add, the lighter the ink becomes and the more that you can spread it. The less alcohol that you use, the more pigmented the ink is, and generally it doesn't move nearly as much. You have a little bit more control over it. So the type of paper that I use is very important as well. You can't just use regular printer paper because the ink will absorb inside of it. Or if you use a paper towel, it will look like you drew on it with a Sharpie. What instead what you're gonna use is called Yupo paper. It's a plastic synthetic paper and um, it's spelled Y-U-P-O. You can get it in many different sizes. In fact, you can get it in a really large roll if you wanna create a very large piece of art. You can get a very, very tiny one if you want to create a tiny piece of art. I like this size because it's a little bit more controllable, a little bit more manageable, and I find that I can create beautiful pieces of abstract art in a nice little, little uh, area. And what's nice about this, this is a five by seven. It's five inches by seven inches. And if you want, you can put it in an 11 by 14 frame. And that always looks really nice too because you have a lot of negative space around it. So, now that we're almost ready to go, we're going to talk about just again, how to prep your area. Again, alcohol inks are very, very, very pigmented and permanent. So you want to make sure that you're wearing a shirt that you don't mind getting paint on or wear an apron. You can also wear gloves if you want so that your fingers don't get painted because sometimes I've gotten paint on my fingers and it can take two days for it to come off. 
And then you also want to make sure that you have a paper towel and that you're protecting whatever area that you're painting near. Since we're going to be painting in a way that includes a little bit of splashes, you wanna be very, very, very careful not to get it on the table. Now, for example, if it does get on the table, like this kind of table, which is granite, you would go ahead and you would take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, you would wet it on a paper towel, and then you would just take it off the table. Now, if it got on a couch or if it got on fabric, I don't know what you would need to do to take it out. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> So, again, we already started off and we filled up all of our bottles so that we have isopropyl alcohol and we have enough isopropyl alcohol and we have all of our inks ready to go and we've considered how we want to approach this painting. So the way that I'd like to start off is with a darker color. So I'm going to start off with this green. It's a forest green. It's an Everglade green. I'm going to put the cap here. And then what I would like to do first is I'm going to activate it with isopropyl alcohol first and then I'll let the ink spread and then I'll show you what it looks like to put the ink on first. So you go ahead and put on the isopropyl alcohol and then here we go. I'm going to add that green and see how it kind of sits there. It's spreading a little bit. If you add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in the middle there you're gonna start spreading the color. Now let's say for example that you see this and maybe you want for this to spread a little bit faster. You have several options. You can either blow on it, you can use a hair dryer, and you can also pick it up and you can move it. You can also add more isopropyl alcohol if you want to. So as you can see, you can go ahead and you can move the ink around. See how whenever we initially started it was a really dark green, but now it's lightening up. I just move it around. Another thing that you can do too with alcohol inks if you want is that you can purchase plates maybe at an antique store and you can paint plates. Anything that's ceramic, you can paint bowls. You can paint canvas if you want to. Um, you don't have to just stick with Yupo paper. There's a lot of other things that you can do. So now that's spreading. So you have this little boundary up here that's kind of bleeding. I'm not in love with that. So the way that you fix that is that you go ahead, you add that isopropyl alcohol. It kind of erases the barrier, but it also pushes that ink in. So let's say that I would like it a little bit darker, maybe in the corners. I would go ahead and I would add a little bit more ink. I'm gonna put the cap on just to keep it safe. Then you go ahead and I'm gonna take some gold so that you can see the gold as well. See how initially whenever you put it in, it doesn't look like it's gonna sit on top, but you'll see in a little bit how it comes forward. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit more. I think that green's really beautiful, especially with the gold. Add a little bit more gold over here. Just keep moving it out. And see as well, whenever you add the isopropyl alcohol, it's like you create a little crater in the paint. And whenever that happens, it can bleed through like that. It can start to close. Or you may create waves like in this area over here. You can see that the isopropyl alcohol was added and then you created like a layer or an area of depth. Let's say that you want more of that. Over here, in the example, as an example, this gold. Maybe I wanna spread that out a little bit. Just add that isopropyl alcohol, let it do what it's gonna do. So while that green is drying, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add blue. And I'll show you how, what it looks like to add ink first and then the isopropyl alcohol because that is a different effect. So this is another thing that I like to do too. If I don't know what color I'd like to use, sometimes you just go ahead and you take the bottle and just look at it next to it. As you can see, Mermaid is kind of a teal also, do you see how my fingers already have a little bit of green on them? If I would have worn gloves, then that wouldn't have happened. There's already a little bit of green in the mermaid, which maybe we want the piece to continue to be green, or maybe we want a lighter blue, such as this one called pool. That's gonna be more of a pale blue, and you can always layer it on top of that. Let's say for an example that you really want a light blue that has a lot more coverage, and then you want a darker blue on top of it. That would be an interesting way to approach it. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna add it right here. 
and see how pigmented that it is. So there's the ink. And let's add that isopropyl alcohol. What will happen as well, and you have to be careful with the colors, is now they're going to bleed into one another. And that's why you wanna be very careful with your color studies. You wanna make sure that it's a color that you like and that you're not mixing too many colors together because if you start mixing all the colors, you'll get a brown that I don't think you would necessarily enjoy. So see they're bleeding together right here. You have this gold that's starting to separate. This really cool gold in here as well that I really like. I like that it separates the green and the blue. Now I see this boundary up here that I'm not completely in love with. So again, I'm gonna change that. I'm just gonna activate it with the isopropyl alcohol. And again, if you want to, you can get a hair dryer and you can blow it, or you can get a straw and you can blow it. There's a lot of different ways that you can activate the inks. Okay, so now that I've put two colors on the Yupo paper and it's starting to dry, I'm kind of wondering where do I wanna go next? And this is where an abstract painting becomes really fun because there's not a right answer or a wrong answer, it's just what you think would be best. So I think if we're creating a painting like this one, that we wanna create a lot of splashes now. So I'll show you how we create that. I'm gonna start off with isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna move this forward so it doesn't splash on my shirt. And you're just gonna lift it up, about here. There we go. See, there are several things that happen. You have the ink that comes up here. That's really beautiful. You have this nice little crater. I like that as well. Let's do it on the blue side. I did five drops. Now I'm gonna take the gold and I'm gonna do the same thing so that that splatters. Oops. You can see why it's really important to have a paper towel around. You protect your space. There we go. I'm taking a purple called Vineyard. And I can either go in between the blue and the green or I can go outside of that, maybe up here. I can add it in here. Kind of like the idea of it going in here. We're gonna let it spread. And all I'm doing is just creating more splatters. You can see how the purple blends into the blue. Now the blue is a layer, it's kind of hiding in the back. And as you can see too, if I just use the ink and I splatter it in, that creates even more vibrant dots up here. Here we go. And this is another type of ink. So we were originally, these are all Ranger. And I'm now going to use a brand called Pinata. What I like about Pinata is that it's an even brighter color than the Tim Holtz. Now, for me personally as an artist, I like a little bit less of a muted color. So this golden yellow 
If you spread it out, then it will be a very bright yellow, but it looks like it's orange. So you have to be careful and know how to experiment with the colors before you get started. Because say for example, I really wanted yellow, but then I have a really condensed area of this color, then I think it's orange. So you, sometimes whenever you get new inks, it's good to just go ahead and try it out on something. So I'm gonna add the orange up in here, the yellow. See how that's a really, really bright yellow. And you can see too in here, that's gonna be a really dark orange, whereas over here on the paper towel, you can see that it's yellow. Here we go. Add more splatters. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna have to add layers on top of this, I think. Because I'm way above. the spot. Okay, I'm gonna let it dry for a second. So for this portion of the video, we're going to learn a new technique, and it is creating lines through air and through movement. What's curious about this technique is that you can use it in a lot of different ways. Again, you can use it on Yupo paper, on um, ceramic bowls, cups, but this time we're going to use photo paper. It's a very glossy photo paper. You can get it at um, Office Max. This is just an HP photo paper. And then we're also going to use this hair dryer. I like this one in particular, this Revlon one, because it's easy to control and you have a lot of control whenever you are moving the inks. I have other ones that I like, but this one's been my favorite so far. So to do this technique, we're going to use this pink sherbet. And we're gonna move a little bit faster on this one. I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn on the hair dryer. Okay, keep that away. Hmm. I'm just gonna put it down here for now. I'm gonna go quickly. Say so you have the ink, you have the isopropyl alcohol, and we're gonna go ahead and move it. So there are things that you can do within that. For example, I really wanna spread it out. So you add in the ink or the isopropyl alcohol, pick up some ink, and you keep moving it. This isn't the best line that I've ever created, but it is good so you can see how the inks can be really wispy because I think that that's part of their extraordinary beauty that you just don't see with other mediums very often. And especially um, Yubo paper can capture this, but photo paper does a really good job too. So as you can see, the ink's starting to spread. It's getting lighter as I move it outwards. Every time that I add the isopropyl alcohol, it's creating more and more layers. As you're going to, you can be careful with the photo paper because it can bend if you use too much heat on it. So the way that you fix that is that you just don't use a hairdryer on it all the time. You let it rest. For example, now I can go ahead and I can look at this. What's fun is that you create all these, again, all these little wispies in here. It's like a, like a breath. So I really like that a lot. I think it's very cool. So now I'm gonna do a darker color from the other side so that we can see what that looks like. And again, the nice thing about creating an abstract is that there is not a whole lot of rules that you have to follow. I want you to see this too. You see how the ink bleeds off onto the napkin, onto your paper towel? That's why you wanna be really careful with it. Then we're gonna move it up. And that's kind of interesting. I didn't think this would happen, but this purple twilight is very similar to the pink sherbet once you stretch it out. So this is just a very small technique 
that you can use. And the reason why I wanted to show you it is because there's a lot of different things that you can do with that. I would not call this a complete painting, personally. However, you can see what it looks like to use alcohol inks and photo paper and air. So that's a fun little technique you can use in the future. Okay, so at this point, now our alcohol ink painting, the base, I would call it, is basically dry. You can go ahead and you can kind of touch it and see. I wouldn't recommend that. What you can do is that you can lean down a little bit and you can look and see if the ink is still, looks like it's wet. And so there are things that I like that have happened so far on this painting, the way that it's dried, and there are things that I'm not completely in love with. I'll start off with what I really love. I love in here that you can see the movement of the gold, you can see it moving downwards. In here, this purple and this blue, then the green is a beautiful blending. And I like that it looks like, it's almost like it looks like there's, it's stitched together down in here. The purple has these really beautiful lines that are reaching forward. And then I like the gold in here as well. I like that it looks like it's maybe an island or it looks like it's, um, I don't know, a dragon or something. It's a lot of different interesting things. But what I don't like completely is I don't love these borders in here. And I also don't like that these dots look like they are behind these colors. Because what originally I wanted to do was it to look like the dots and all of the um, splatters are forward on top of that layer. So what I'm gonna do now is basically create another layer. And we're gonna take care of these borders too. This is just my personal opinion. I like this down here. This is interesting, but these borders just seem a little bit out of place. So I'm gonna add a new color. I'm gonna add pink this time, pink sherbet. And pink goes well, it can go with green. Again, let's look at our color study. We could do green. I don't know if I wanna invade the green with pink though. We could use it on this side. Purple looks good. Yellow would be interesting. And maybe right in the middle here, we could add some pink. So what I'm gonna do this time is create more splatters. There we go. I think that looks really cool. Yeah, add a little bit more isopropyl on top. Again, I wanna be really careful with those borders, personally. So I'm gonna let that bleed for a second. And as you can see, what happened is because I added isopropyl alcohol again, it creates that purple, it, it makes the purple move again, so it reactivates it. So again, if there's something maybe that I felt like that I messed up on, I could add that isopropyl alcohol and I could blot that painting and I could lift the ink a little bit. So again, I'm gonna add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol. And you see how we create these really cool splatters over here? That's from the alcohol. We create more splatters. What I like about alcohol inks too is that you can just turn on music and you can listen to your favorite songs and just watch the colors create new, new dialogue with each other almost. It's like they're talking to each other. Here we go. And you may be able to see too, now it looks like this part is on top of that base layer. So again, you're creating layers. It's like you're thinking about the very bottom and then you're moving it forward. And that all depends on your particular perspective and what you want. Maybe you, maybe you wanted all the colors to be in front of the splatters so that it looks like the mountains in an ocean or something like that. I wanted things, I wanted the sparkles or the little splashes on top of everything, but that's my personal opinion. And again, what's beautiful about alcohol inks and what's beautiful about abstracts is that there's really not a, a rule that you have to follow. You can create what you feel is best. So I think too, that I'm gonna go ahead and blow the color a little bit. I wanna go this way. So I'm gonna start over here. Just she use my breath. So, get the ponytail out of the way. Let it move back in again. I'm very pleased with how this is working out.
I hope you like your painting too. See, let it come back. And see how in here we created a really muddled color? I'm not completely in love with that, but that could change. And the reason why that can change is because I can blow the purple up into the pink and the yellow. I can also blow downwards if I wanted to take it down and away. But I actually like the darker, kind of like maybe orange brown on top of that yellow. I think that's really interesting. I like it a lot. And as I, I see in here too, looks like there's, looks like there's, I don't even know how to describe what that is. Like that boundary, this kind of boundary is what I like. I think it's very unique. Again, unique. I really look forward to showing you how this painting is completely different than the other one that I initially showed you because the alcohol inks, they do as they want and they move how they want. And that's the, in my opinion, one of the best ways to create an abstract piece of art is with a medium that you can control only to a certain degree. So as you can see, again, we have these boundaries that are being created. This is still drying. Now that I'm looking at it, I kind of like this boundary. I'm okay with that. And also whenever you are using your breath to blow on the alcohol inks, make sure you come back and take a breath of fresh air because the isopropyl alcohol is there. So just be careful. If you feel lightheaded, just leave the room and maybe get a straw or something different. I'm gonna add more splatters. I'm also gonna add a little bit more pink. So thank you so much for learning how to create an abstract alcohol ink painting with me. Again, my name is Paige Lehman. You can find me on Instagram. It's at P-A-I-G-E-L-E-H. You can also find me at the Mesquite Arts Programming in the fall. If you see me at an event and if you've taken this video, I really hope that I get to see your painting and I get to meet you. And I hope that we get to create alcohol inks together soon.